Well, what is going on, folks out there in YouTube land? I've got something on the table that is, well, it's very interesting, to me at least. Uh, this is a war spear. I know, I'm supposed to say it, war spear. But it's a war spear. I've had a few others on the channel. You can go back and take a look for those reviews if you'd like. These are budget knives from China. Uh, but they are, well, each one of them has been very interesting. And I saw this one recently on White Mountain Knives. And I hadn't seen this, uh, this one in particular. This is the WP505BK. And as always, uh, the folks at War Spear have really taken the time to give this an interesting name. No, no, they have not. But it is an interesting knife. First, let's get something out of the way. This is a monster of a knife. It is big. Big in a fantastic way. <laughs> but big just the same. Uh, what are we looking at? Well, we are looking at four and an eighth inches of 14C28N. Grip area from behind the choil. Um, excuse me, behind the flipper. One, two, three, uh, four and a quarter one, two, three, four, and almost a half inches of grip. Now, if you add this forward choil, one, two, three, four, five and a quarter inches of handle. The overall knife, good Lord, this thing is big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just shy of nine and a half inches of knife. And these are 30 bucks, give or take a few dollars one way or the other. I think if you get them on AliExpress, they're 27, but then you pay shipping. If you get them on White Mountain Knives, they're 30 and some change. It's 30 bucks. This is so much knife for almost no money. Uh, it is really amazing. And it is made just as well as the other war spears that I've had. It's not a particularly fancy knife uh, and does have one glaring thing that I really don't like, but the size of it alone means that I kind of don't care. <laughs> it's freaking amazing. It's not that heavy. Uh, it is G10 on steel liners. The liner lock is locked up at about 40%, which is plenty good for anybody. It has a deep carry clip, but it's got proud screws, so it's not as deep carry or as easy deep carry as it could be. It's got a G10 backspacer that is black. It's got a sunk-in pivot, as you can see. It's a hex shape, and so it won't turn as you're trying to loosen this thing up. Uh, on this side, it's got this pivot collar, which is green. I'm going to say G10, but I'm not sure. It feels like G10. That's a very war spear thing. And the other thing that they do is they give you a tool kit that comes with these knives with extra screws, an orange pivot collar, and a black deep carry clip, which is right there. I'm not sure all of this show. There it is. If you wanted to, so you could dye that black and, I don't know, and it comes with a cool cleaning cloth that says War Spear, and that's for 30 bucks. That is really a good budget deal, considering how big this thing is. The others aren't this big. They're big knives, but this thing is very big, and I love this blade shape. It is reminiscent of the slicer grind, but it's not the same. It doesn't have the same, you know, overall dimensions. It's a completely different material. The flats are different. It's a slightly different shape, but it is reminiscent of the slicer grind. So if you like the slicer grind, you're going to like the blade on the War Spear WP505BK. Again, look, I'm actually not against knives with numbers on them, like the 0562, for instance, or the XM18. These are knives without fancy names and just numbers, but WP505BK is, it's a mouthful, but that's okay. Um, I like big budget knives, particularly I like 14C28 8 blade steel. <laughs> My God. Let's try that again. 14C, 28 and blade steel, big budget knives. Now, is 14C a great steel? No. Is it better than D2? No, probably not if you're going to beat the crap out of your knife, but it is more stain and rust resistant. And for most people, 
that is as much a concern as durability and all the other things. And the edge retention on these has been very good. My other three war spears have held their edge very well. I believe this will be the same. So what's my actual complaint? Let's get that out of the way first. It's these. These right here, these thumb ramps. I had a Ganzo recently that had these on there. Now the Ganzo, you could remove them apparently and there was a hole underneath that you could use it as a, as a deployment method. I haven't taken these off yet. Um, and I do wanna say one thing, this does better than the Ganzo. Uh, these are ramped up this way. So as you're slicing material back here towards this end of the blade, they hit this and they actually, it opens, it doesn't stick, it actually slides up in this way and then or up over the top because they are ramped, which is nice. But they're completely unnecessary because this knife has got a fantastic flipper that works every time. So maybe leave that off next time, oh, war spear. It's actually, yeah. That's kind of a bummer. I'm not a big fan of, of weird shaped thumb ramp things. I love thumb studs. You know, functional thumb studs are awesome. Uh, but even those, I prefer to be sort of out of the cutting path or at least as far back as you can go. Um, these are neither. Well, I mean, they are functional. They, they work. They work very well, but they're, I don't know, not necessary. I'll pull them off uh, after the review and see what is underneath. No, you know what? Let's see if we can get them off now. Is that turning? Yeah, we're gonna need two of these. All right, I'm not gonna do it right now. Eh, maybe I will, stand by a sec. All right, I grab my other set of tools. Yeah, you really can't take these off. I mean, there would be a, well, you know what, maybe that's okay. That would be up to you. Do you hate that? The sort of cutout on the blade? It's designed so that the studs can't turn on you. Oh, they still technically work. Yeah, I don't like that. Hang on a sec. All right. I put them back. Yeah, you know, uh, you could take them off uh, and it would improve the cutting on the blade, but I don't like the way it looks without it on there, so we're gonna leave it on for now. But I think as I go forward, I may very well take them off if I'm gonna turn this into a full-time user just because that weird space with the hole in the middle wasn't that great. But I will say it is nice that they did notch out the blade to support these studs so they're not gonna go anywhere on you while you're using the knife. It's actually not a bad touch. I expected them to just sort of be stuck to the sides, but they weren't. They're actually milled in just a little bit into the blade, which, okay, that's cool. The action on this thing is just good. It's running on bearings. Uh, when I say good, I mean very good. Of course, it's hard to do bad with a blade this heavy. I will say that the detent, can I fail it? No, let's try again. Nope, even with a really soft touch, the blade flips out and locks in place. Um, this is a well-done knife for $30 or $32 bucks or whatever they cost. Let's get some size comparisons. I'm sorry about all that weirdness in the middle. I thought maybe it would be like the Ganzo and there'd be a deployment th thumb hole in the middle there, but there kind of wasn't, so let's move on. All right, what should we compare it against? Okay, well, you saw one of these. Here it is against the, uh, the ZT0562. This is the full tie version. As you can see, the War Spear WP505BK is much bigger. Let's line it up there. Uh, here it is against the uh, full size Presidio 2 from Benchmade, one of my favorite larger knives, and the War Spear just dwarfs it. 
I mean, this is a big knife. And here it is against PM2. Again, War Spear is just much, much bigger. I really like this thing. <laughs> I like it because how big it is. And for our small knife comparison, we will do it up against the, the Mini Presidio 2 and the Mini RSK MK1 from Hogue. Right, the War Spear is just a monster. It really is. You know what, I'll, if these are still available, I'll put a link in the description, and if they aren't available, I'll put a link to the other War Spears that I can find in the description. I love silly stuff like this. I mean, by silly, I mean just the sheer size of it. I mean, it is absolutely a monster, and they don't charge too much for it, and it is comfortable and handy. It is very comfortable. Look at the way the G10 is milled out to give you a little grip. Right, both ends, here and here. Uh, there is some jimping up here on the blade and a little bit of a ramp right here. So your thumb has got this really great natural place to land. You can come forward and use that choil just fine. Now you are close to the edge, but not on it. And if you had smaller hands than mine, it would be a great fit. Of course, if you had smaller hands than mine, this knife would be a pocket sword. It has an enormous lanyard space back here. I mean, look at that. You could put rope through there if you wanted to. But it is completely out of the way of the blade path. The liners are milled, which is very well done. You know, a lot like the other war spears I've had, and by the way, I want to point out, I think if they got rid of the word war spear and just had their war spear logo, I would like it better. Uh, there's very little billboarding beyond that. There's the blade steel, which is right in there, and then there's war spear. Now, if they got rid of that and just had that logo on there, I think that would be awesome. But anyway, this thing is it brute, but it's not that heavy. Honestly, it's about the same as the full-size Presidio here. 14C28N is going to do very well for you in a working environment. It's going to get wet very well. It's going to maintain its edge pretty well. You're going to need to sharpen it more often than you are, a better steel, but that's the truth of all budget knives. So if you're looking for a monster budget knife, the WP505BK might be your thing. Let's weigh it. Five point eight ounces for a nine inch plus knife. That ain't bad. God, the action on this thing is really good. And these ridiculous thumb ramps work very well. So if you don't hate that, you're not going to hate the rest of the knife. Stuff like this is fun. I mean, you can spend unlimited amounts of money on knives if you want to. You know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, whatever. Right? You can spend a lot of money on knives. But the reason that I love stuff like this War Spear so much is because this is where I started. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a knife to get a big, beastly, kick-ass work tool like this. And I do want to point out that, and I will wait, I'll measure this, and it's going to be difficult because of the way they did those studs, but it does come down to a very nice edge. The grind is completely even on both sides, right, which is something that not even Spyderco can seem to get right. Uh, they did a little, well, okay, a little tiny bit of a smile right back here. They went just a little bit past the grunge, the uh, grunge, the plunge line back here. But it's not, it doesn't, it's not like it gets taller. It just, they followed it back a little too far. But still, for 30 bucks or 35, whatever these things are, I'll have the price in the description. This thing is ridiculous, but in the best way. I have enjoyed having it. I carried it, I uh, went to the beach recently, actually. This is the knife I chose because I was wearing big, thick shorts because it wasn't that warm. And uh, this thing was just a monster to have on hand. <laughs> I really loved it. It's great to carry and great to use. Let's see if we can get a reading on the uh, blade stock, shall we? All right, can we get in there? Yeah, we can. All right, 3.2 millimeters. So not super thick stock to begin with. Look at this swedge. Oh, there we are. I love the way this thins and then flares towards the tip. Um, nice edge, good belly, good user. Decent slice of that 14C blade steel. G10 has done well. It's comfortable. 
yeah, this is a win. It really is. And we're going to go ahead and leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the War Spear 505BK. Uh, if you have an interest in this knife, feel free to check out the link that will be in the description. And I'll either lead you to this one or some of the other War Spears. Uh, if you have any questions about this knife or any of my knives, feel free to ask down in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time.